A safe return to Earth from the space station greeting the astronauts of the next commercial crew flight and an update on development of a human lunar landing system. A few of the stories to tell you about this week at NASA. On April 16th, the International Space Station's Expedition 64 crew, including our Kate Rubens, closed out its time on the station. After saying farewell to those remaining on board the orbital outpost, Rubens, Sergei Rizikov, and Sergei Kutsvertskov, both of the Russian space agency Roscosmos, climbed aboard their Soyuz spacecraft and headed back to Earth. The trio touched down safely in Kazakhstan on the morning of April 17th after spending 185 days conducting research and maintenance aboard the space station. On April 16th, the astronauts for NASA's SpaceX Crew-2 mission to the space station arrived at our Kennedy Space Center for final pre-launch activities ahead of their flight to the station. Crew-2 is currently targeted for launch April 22nd from Kennedy's Launch Complex 39A. We come in uh, on, the, on the plane over here and we got to, to fly by the pad and see our rocket getting ready to go and it's just an amazing feeling. I've gotten to do that before and there really there's nothing like it when you look out the window and see a spaceship getting prepared and realize that uh, you're going to be riding on it in a few days. Crew 2 is the second crew rotation flight of SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft and the first with two international partners. The flight follows certification by NASA for regular flights to the space station as part of the agency's commercial crew program. Also on April 16th, NASA picked SpaceX to develop its commercial human landing system for the Artemis program. Their design was one of three competing for a crewed demonstration mission to the lunar surface. This system will help NASA complete the final leg of its lunar journey and land the next two American astronauts on the moon. Former NASA astronaut Pam Melroy has been nominated by President Biden to serve as the agency's deputy administrator. The nomination must be confirmed by the Senate. In a statement released in response to the nomination, acting NASA Administrator Steve Jerzyk said Melroy is a proven leader with a bold vision who is driven by a desire to solve the biggest issues here on Earth throughout the solar system and beyond. A veteran of three space flights and one of only two women to command a space shuttle, Melroy logged more than 38 days in space. Our Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope will use gravitational microlensing to find thousands of new planets beyond our solar system. This quirk of gravity makes it possible to locate planets by observing how a planet's gravity distorts distant starlight. Turns out that because solitary small black holes known as stellar mass black holes produce the same effects, the mission will also provide the best opportunity yet to definitively detect these black holes for the first time. The Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope is currently targeted for launch in the mid-2020s. April 12th marked the 40-year anniversary of STS-1, the first space flight of the nation's space shuttle program. On that date in 1981, NASA astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen launched aboard Space Shuttle Columbia on a two-day test mission that began a new era of human spaceflight. It allowed us to fly a diverse group of people into space to become astronauts. Uh, we didn't need just test pilots anymore. So it opened up the, uh, the field of the astronauts uh, in a much broader range than we'd ever had before. SDS-1 was NASA's first crewed mission since the Apollo-Soyuz test project in 1975. The launch also occurred 20 years to the day after cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to orbit Earth on April 12, 1961. That's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on the web at nasa.gov slash twine.